One of the most common sins I hear confessed in the sacrament of penance is that of pornography and masturbation. I can't tell you who's saying it, but I can say it's a struggle for a lot of people. Some consider it merely a bad habit they know they should stop, while others see it as a sin so grave it removes them from communion with the Church. Who's right? As with many things in Catholic moral theology, it depends. This is Catholicism in Focus. Over the past few decades, the barriers limiting access to pornography and the stigma attached to masturbation have all but disappeared. Now it takes nothing more than internet access and anyone can watch pornographic material. For many people, these practices are normal, healthy, and entirely unproblematic, even for children. Uh, yeah, no. Despite this cultural shift, the Catholic Church has remained steadfast in its long-held stance condemning the practice as selfish and disordered. Both the magisterium of the Church, in the course of a constant tradition, and the moral sense of the faithful have declared without hesitation that masturbation is an intrinsically and seriously disordered act. Two important categories are used here. First, it is an act that is disordered, meaning that it seeks an end which is incompatible with its purpose. All objects have an end or purpose for which it was created. You use a hammer to drive in nails. To use it as a weapon or paperweight would be disordered. For sexual activity, the end for which it was created is twofold procreation, and unity between married couples. To act in a sexual manner outside of these ends, say, for pleasure alone by oneself, would be a disordered act. But simply being disordered in itself does not necessitate that something is gravely ill or even always wrong. Occasionally eating to excess is disordered, but it is far from grave, and eating as an act in itself is a good thing. For this reason, the Church has also designated masturbation as serious and an evil that is intrinsic. Serious is obvious, signifying that it is no run-of-the-mill sin, but one with grave implications, while intrinsic notes that there is something inherent to the act itself that is evil. No matter the situation, no matter the intention, it is wrong. These terms are often used together, but it's important to distinguish between them. Killing is a serious evil, but not an intrinsic evil, as self-defense is justifiable. Lying, on the other hand, is intrinsically evil, always wrong, but not necessarily serious. For the Church, masturbation is intrinsically and seriously disordered, meaning that it deals with a grave misuse of an action and that it is always wrong, leading many, quite naturally, to conclude that doing so constitutes a mortal sin. But this is not necessarily true because that is not how mortal sins work. As I discussed in a previous video, designating something a mortal sin requires three criteria be met. The action deals with grave matter, is acted upon with full knowledge, and results from one's full consent of will. We've already established that the Church considers masturbation dealing with grave matter, so we look now to full knowledge. Many people know exactly what they're doing when they look at pornography and masturbate. They know that it is wrong for them to do, that they are participating in an industry that encourages extortion, abuse, slavery, and even abortion, and that the effects are severe. But this is not always the case. According to the Catechism, there is what is described as unintentional ignorance. When one does not know what they are doing is wrong or understand the gravity of their actions, the imputability of their offenses can be diminished. In this situation in particular, we know that there are some who are very young or have mental or emotional limits that prevent them from fully understanding the gravity of the situation. In such cases, it cannot be a mortal sin. This does not, however, excuse what the Church describes as feigned ignorance and hardness of heart, willfully turning from a virtuous life, or doing what is required to understand natural moral laws. You can't just plead ignorance to try to get away with things. At some point in your life, there are certain things you should just know. What is far more ambiguous in the eyes of the Church is the criteria of complete consent of will. While we don't believe that anyone is ever without free will, there are constantly forces impeding and acting upon us. Paragraph 1735 of the Catechism teaches, Imputability and responsibility for an action can be diminished or even nullified by ignorance, inadvertence, duress, fear, habit, inordinate attachments, and other psychological or social factors. Is this something that happened while you were sleeping or just after waking, a time when you were not fully conscious of what you were doing? Is it the result of a deep-seated habit that has a tight grip on you for years? Are you under immense psychological stress? Did someone force you to do this? If any of these are the case, the designation of mortal sin likely does not apply. Now, this is not to say that claiming it as a habit frees one from any guilt or that it's all of a sudden okay. Far from it. 
Even if it is a situation of diminished consent, it may not technically be a mortal sin, but it is still participation in grave evil, which can do great harm. One's freedom may be limited, yes, but it is never extinguished. There is always the ability to ask for help, to give all of your will to resist, to do what is necessary to avoid the near occasion of sin. No matter the situation or circumstances, there is still a responsibility to do what you can to avoid evil. And so, is masturbation a mortal sin? Sometimes yes, for sure. There are some who know what they are doing is wrong, give little resistance, and feel no contrition. This undoubtedly separates one from God and his church and must be taken extremely seriously. But in other cases, absolutely not. There are loads of people trying their best, wanting nothing more than to please God only to find themselves deeply gripped by addictive behavior. This is not the same situation. It may be the same action and certainly has negative effects on one's soul, but it doesn't cut one off from God. To those people, I say this. Relax. Seek the help you need. Keep trying as hard as you can. Come to confession and trust in the mercy of God. He will not cast away anyone who desires to be with him. Thank you.